as the title of this video suggests, it's going to be about slip rings. Well, what is an electrical slip ring? They're in almost every little brushed electric motor you'll ever encounter, and people use them in the context of building like DIY wind turbines or robotics. There's a lot of applications where you need to achieve something so simple, but yet not immediately obvious how to do. Is you have a stationary wire, this could be a power wire or a signal wire, whatever kind of wire, and you have a rotating wire. And you want the signal to get from a stationary wire to one that's rotating. You basically want there, there to be continuity between these two wires while one's rotating and one is stationary. That is the task that a slip ring solves for you. And what I have under the camera here is just a rudimentary slip ring system so that we can kind of make sense of how you would do that. How do you take these two wires are stationary they're just hot glued to a piece of cardboard that's held with this third hand. That, and then, but where I want the signal to end up is on this wire, this red wire. I want there to be continuity between this wire and this wire. And I want there to be continuity between this wire and this one. And then, moreover, I don't just want, you know, a power signal. I want a true signal where data could be transmitted from this from this wire that will be stationary while these rotate. And then all this is is it's a piece of cardboard. Then I took a compass and cut out a cardboard circle and then cut out two aluminum foil circles. Definitely crude, no doubt about it, but for demonstration purposes it works every time. This is how I made sense of slip rings a long time ago. And they're used, as I said, in tons of applications from wind turbine construction and home wind turbines to they use them in amusement park rides where rides are rotating, but yet the lights are still working. And the platform of the ride is stationary, but it's tumbling or twisting or doing whatever, but the lights are still working. Uh, anytime you see that sort of stuff, you're normally going to have one or two options. You're going to have a slip ring in there or you'll have some sort of magnetic communicative system, a magnetic commuter setup, where the signal or the power is being sent through magnetism. But in this case, this is the most basic, generic, how it got started sort of setup for a slip ring. You have two stationary wires that have their, that have been stripped on the ends, and their copper conductor is in a brush formation. It's just brushed out like the end of a paintbrush. And as this disc rotates, those wires will drag across these two conductors, these circular copper aluminum foil conductors. This conductor is connected to the rotating wire, it's soldered, it goes underneath, just under the cardboard and comes out the other side, right here. And then this wire is just soldered directly to that inner aluminum foil ring. Well, the green wire, the green wire, the green wire is touching this circular conductor that connects to this other green wire. This red wire is dragging along the circular aluminum foil conductor that this red wire is connected to. And what I have running, there is a servo underneath this aluminum, the aluminum foil and cardboard circle. There's a servo that will turn it real slow in a clockwise direction. And it's, the servo is being controlled by a simple little Arduino. Then on the Arduino, I'm not only driving the servo, but I'm running the blink without delay code. Let's see how it works. Then we can talk a little more about it. Plug the servo in. And then plug in the Arduino. And that's how it works. Notice these wires are completely stationary. They're not moving. The third hand's holding them. The Arduino's not moving. The power supply for the servo, it's out of screen, but it's just a battery and a 9 volt to 5 volt power supply. The, the servo is not moving the base of it, just its head's turning. And notice that that LED is blinking as the old start out common blink program on the Arduino. I'm just have, I just happen to be using blink without delay in this context so that the Arduino is able to drive the servo as well as blink that LED using the mills function rather than having a second delay the servo would jitter and you wouldn't get this smooth circular motion from the servo. 
and if it has to delay for a second, start back for a second, back and forth. Um, Blink without delay, you can look it up, it's in the examples of the Arduino. Um, but all that's happening, so simple, is that the end of the two stationary wires is just dragging across the aluminum foil circular conductors that are in turn attached to the wires going to the LED. And this is an example, it'd be one thing to just have the LED on, but it's a different thing where if you can blink that LED using uh, the MILS function, you can send data just as well. And you, so you can have a sensor up here that you're sending data to or receiving data from. Granted, copper or aluminum foil and a little simple crude setup like this, it wouldn't last that long that the copper and the aluminum foil will wear down eventually. And that's the one downside to any sort of slip ring setup that one could make is that eventually the conductors, you have to kind of choose them carefully. Aluminum conducts, copper conducts, brass conducts, steel will conduct. And given if it's a certain kind of steel, it will at least. And different alloys will. But you just want to pick two alloys or two metals that will last for a pretty good period of time like in the back of every electric motor when you, people have probably heard of the idea or done it themselves of replacing the brushes well that's exactly what this is the way those brushes work except there is brakes along the circular conductor at the back of electric motors where the conductor is running and that's what energizes, de-energizes, and keeps the motor spinning is a slip ring set up in the back of every brushed DC motor. And this just takes the idea of a brush literally and leaves the conductors or the stationary wires stripped out looking like little brushes. And just like brushes will wear out in electric motors and have to be brushed electric motors, they, the, this setup can wear out too but it's been used a long time in industrial applications. Normally, you, what you'll see is there'll be a shaft and it'll have copper rings on the back end of it and then you would have two little brushes or fingers and then as that shaft turns, those fingers are stationary. They're one side of the signal, the stationary wire, and then on the circular rotating shaft, that eventually those may come out on the far end as another copper ring set up with little fingers. Then that's how you can translate signals through something that's rotating. It's from stationary to rotating and yet you can communicate command signals, you can receive sensor data, you can transfer power back and forth down the line using the principle behind this little simple demonstration. So that people can really see it, we can zoom in And all that's happening, as we'll move this out just a little bit, is just stripped stationary wire dragging on these aluminum foil rings. That's all there is to it. And that blink without delay, there's no interruption. You may see a little flicker, that's just because, well, I got a little glue on the aluminum foil as I was adhering it to the piece of cardboard. But you can use this same principle to create any DIY slip ring setup you would ever want and it will work it's just you have to think about material selection and do I have copper what is my copper running on or is my circular conductor is it going to be copper and the stationary is that going to be copper too or is one of those going to be steel or one of them is going to be aluminum because you will get wear after a while like this little demonstration given that there's not much pressure on these copper wires they're pretty much just dragging on this super cheap thin aluminum foil this would run a lot longer than you'd think it'd run just like electric motors last a pretty good while before their graphite brushes they use a mixture of graphite and copper little square slugs most of the time and it wears down eventually and think about the rotation that's going through that sending power back and forth in an electric motors it's just a matter of energizing and de-energizing but you could just as well send signals. The aluminum foil copper is not going to deal with a super high speed rotation setup. 
not something wimpy like this. But you can pick stronger conductive, you know, stronger, thicker materials, and you can spin whatever the rotating device is at a fairly fast speed, and it will work. They use it, like I said, in factories and machine works all over the world every day and have done so for a long time. But a slip ring is a neat solution, we'll zoom back out, to the problem of how do you get a signal from a stationary wire to one that is rotating. That's what this setup will be a solution to. And you can use steel bearings, you can use all kinds of things if people are interested in it. I can make four or five different little demonstrations of how to build various forms of slip ring setup with PVC and copper washers, etc., etc. That the more sophisticated you get, the more difficult it is. And why would one maybe want to do this? Why would they think about building their own slip ring? Well, because slip ring connections are anywhere from $10 to $14, 15 up to $200, $300 if it's a high amperage application. They can be really very expensive. Or they can be cheaper. It just depends on what a person's looking for and what amperage or what sort of signal they're trying to send or receive back and forth across stationary wires to rotating wires. But I hope this video has been helpful. If you liked it, please consider clicking like and also consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you.